What's up, YouTube? This is uh, Flooding Mod 14 here, and we are back with another week of uh, eh, the usual Yu Gi Oh card openings. Uh, let's see, how are you guys doing today? Today is actually it's the morning of July the 2nd, holiday weekend, 2016. And, uh, yeah, let me just say a quick uh, thank you to. Uh, you know, if you guys have anyone who is, or has, or will serve in the armed forces, the military, uh, or, you know, cops or firefighters, whatever, hey, uh, I just want to say that I appreciate everyone's service out there, man. Uh, past, present, and future, you know, man, woman, and child. <laughs> so, uh, trust me, that is not easy. Uh, you know, serving in combat, so, uh, yeah, with that being said, let us open some cards, and, uh, you know, I actually don't know what I'm going to open for you guys today, I have no idea, um, perhaps I'll do, actually, let's see what's in this mystery box, because I kind of forget, I have no idea, so, uh, I'm going to open this up real quick, As, are there even cards in here? I guess we'll find out. <clears throat> Cards! Oh, this is all like superbly gift wrapped and stuff. Ah, there are cards in here. Okay. And in here we have a. We have. Oh, wow. Okay, we have an Emperor of Darkness structure deck, and this is, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty interesting. Let's, uh, open this up, shall we? <laughs> yeah, got so many boxes and different cards and stuff laying around here. I have no idea what's what anymore, but hey, that's okay. It's all good fun. Here's the, uh, kind of structure deck. Just look at it. Man, <laughs> I got to sit on the throne, he's just like, yep, he looks kind of bored. It's like, I'm bored. I need to harvest some lives. I'm joining in soon. <laughs> oh, man. Alright, allow me to read here. Emperor of Dark Destructor Dick. Reloaded. Remix. Okay. Enough of that. This. <clears throat> this Emperor of Dark Destructor Dick is filled with some of the most imposing monsters ever made, and they demand tribute. Monarchs are high-level monsters that unleash their devastating elemental powers. When tributes are offered to some of them, do you have what it takes to command their awesome might to victory? And beyond. This structure deck includes 36 common cards, Two ultra rare cards, three super rare cards, one token card, one beginner's guide, and one double sided. Oh yeah, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get Deluxe <laughs> game mat and dueling guide with tips to bring you to <sighs> victory. Alright, so let, yeah, this is the uh, Emperor of Darkness structure deck, and I suppose I'll just kind of, well, I'll kind of go over some of the, uh, the cards in the set. Um, there we go. Uh, okay, goes with a beginner's guide here, and uh, <laughs> it's funny. I actually don't collect these beginner's guides, but it's always kind of interesting just to see, you know, what's in here. So, yeah, we got uh, got the main monster, Oedipus, the underworld, kind of featured on the cover here. And, uh, yeah. Uh, they kind of, you know, of course, give the basics, you know. Uh, how to play a trap. That's a trap. <laughs> First of all, you how to play a trap? Let me explain. You don't tell your opponent it's a trap. You simply say... I'm setting this face down for later. That's how you play a trap. Very simple. Uh, yeah. Pretty standard stuff. I had exceed summon, you know, the basics. 
add a sink, add a fuse. Show me your fuse. But, uh, you know. I need my bridge quotes. Uh, do you guys like Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge? I don't know. I do. Um, anyway. This is what we really want to read. And, uh, yeah, this is the dueling mat. Here we go. And, yeah, let's see if I can get a kind of long pan of that. Uh, looks pretty cool, I must say. <laughs> very nice, very nice. And on the back is the dueling guide, so... Yeah, I'm not going to read all of it, but, uh... Yeah, I'll read, like, the first couple paragraphs here. The Emperor of Darkness Structure Deck is ready to duel right out of the box. You're all set to start playing. Alright. So you have your deck list. And then I'll read this part. The Monarchs take command. Tribute some of these high-level monsters to unleash their true power. Exodia obliterates. <laughs> Ether, the Heavenly Monarch. Oedipus, the Underworld Monarch. And Kaos, the Shadow Monarch can only unleash their awesome power when you tribute summon them. First, gather the required tribute. 1. For level 5 or 6 monsters. 2. For level 7 or more monsters. By summoning monsters like Edia, the Heavenly Squire, and Eidos, the Underworld Squire, that give you extra monsters and summons to work with. Then, use them to tribute summon the right monarch for the current situation. With the effects of Erebus, the Underworld Monarch, and Return of the Monarchs, you can constantly add new monarchs to your hand to meet you in each challenge. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, if you run out of monsters to tribute, try tributing your opponents. Monsters with spells like the Monarch Stormforth and Soul Exchange. Classic. Love it. I love that a classic card like Soul Exchange is still being played. Because this deck's pretty meta, not gonna lie. So, eh. Eh. And I think I've kind of left my thoughts on the current, uh, well, July 2016 meta. But, uh, eh. Am I just a hater? Probably. But now that I have something made of myself, eh, maybe I'll like it. I don't know. Anyway, this is, uh,. Ether, the Heavenly Monarch, uh, pretty much not the ace of the deck, but uh, very good, uh, and it's pretty shiny, so I should look at that. But, uh, you can tribute summon this card by tributing one tribute summon monster. If this card tributes summon, you can send two monarch spell traps with different names from your hand or deck to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon one monster with 2400 or more attack and 1000 defense from your deck good. That's a good card. But return it to you, the hand, during the end phase. That's also good. During your opponent's main phase, if this card's in your hand, you can banish one monarch spell trap to the graveyard immediately after this effect resolves, then tribute summon this card. This is a quick effect. Okay. Long story short, this card can spring at any time, really. Uh, because it says this is a quick effect, that means it, it has a uh, the power to be activated during either turn. So, and it's pretty good, not gonna lie. Pretty good card. Alright, next card Oedipus, the Underworld Monarch. Yeah, there he is. Pretty, uh, pretty cool looking card there. Pretty evil looking, actually. But this is the guy on the front cover, so definitely, I'd say the best. Eh, I don't know. Uh, Ether is kind of good too, the Heavenly, but. I think Erebus is the best. Meh, to each his own. Uh, zombie, dark, 8 stars, 2,800 attack, thou defense. You can tribute summon this card by tributing one tribute summon monster. Ah, I'm sensing a theme here. <laughs> uh, this card tribute summon. You can send two monarch spell traps. Ah, different names from your hand or deck to the graveyard. Got it. And if you do, shuffle one card from your opponent's hand at random. Graveyard or their side of the field into the deck. <laughs> what? <laughs> that is OP. Wow. Okay, I like it. Yeah, I would definitely say that this one is the best. Uh, Oedipus. That effect alone is very good. Um, once during either player's turn, if this card's in your hand, ah, yes, you can discard a monarch spell and trap. 
Then target one monster in your graveyard with 2400 or more attack and defense. Add it to your hand. I ah, see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely the cat's pajamas. That's the bee's knees, man. So, there you go. And then from there, everything just kind of combos. Long story short, the uh, goal of the deck is to constantly have monarchs in your hand with the effects of these two guys. Okay. Also, at the same time, you're clearing out your opponent's cards. Okay. And furthermore, like especially with Erebus here, you're basically recycling monarchs and you're summoning a different one each turn. Now, what you want to do is definitely have a good supply of a good variety of different monarchs. Uh, because some monarchs will kill spells and traps, some will actually destroy from the hand, which, believe me, is a good thing. Uh, <laughs> comes in handy if you're facing an Exodia deck, right? Right, right. Um, other monarchs will destroy spells and traps, uh, destroy monsters with effects, but see, sometimes you won't, you will not want to destroy a monster by an effect. So there are other monarchs that, uh, you know, do other things, like, uh, Remo remove monsters from play. So there you go. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, the rest of these cards I might kind of speed through, but basically that's the gist of it. Uh, now this is, uh, Eidos and Idea, uh, and long story short, they combo to, uh, <clears throat> to bring back each other, basically. Um, but what they do is lock down the extra deck, long story short. Um, so, there's that. Uh, and also, they allow, um, they allow, like, an additional tribute summon, uh, basically. Um, so, so there's that, yeah. So, um... Okay. Also, if uh, Idea here is sent to the graveyard, you can get a uh, banished spell or trap and add it to your hand. So that's that's actually really good for Idea. And uh, for Aidos, you can uh, you can basically yeah you can basically do the additional summon so uh, of tribute summon once per turn, which is good. That's good. So. Anyway, this is probably the best spell of the deck, and it is uh, Pantheism of the Monarchs. So, uh, yeah, for all you uh, Christians out here, out here, only believe in one God, this deck is not for you. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Uh, I actually am a Christian, by the way, um, despite my potty mouth. Yeah. But uh, I think that's a topic for another video. Anyway, <laughs> allow me to read this card. Yeah, but hey, Yu-Gi-Oh is just pretend, right? Right, right. It's just a pretend children's card game that adults sometimes play. What's wrong with that? Um, send one Monarch spell trap from your hand to the graveyard to draw two cards. That is good. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Okay. Reveal three Monarch spell and traps from your deck. Your opponent chooses one for you to add, and you shuffle the rest back into your deck. That's pretty good. Very good card, actually. Right. And uh, now we get, you know, kind of some of some some of the main monarchs in the deck. Um, Kaos. Now this is the one that removes from play. Um, all of these have 2,400 attack and a thousand defense. Uh, that I'm about to just kind of zoom through here. Uh, I could, yeah. And their effects I'll basically explain quickly. Uh, banish targets a card on the field and banish destroys one monster. Zaps it, Bzz, Zaborg. <laughs> uh, Grand Morg will crush, use its Rock Crusher to destroy a set card. Now, by set, it can either be spell or trap or set monster, so there you go. Mobius, or Mobius, just I prefer Mobius, but uh, destroys two up to two spells and traps on the field, which also means you could get rid of some of your own spells and traps. Uh, most people don't think of that with Mobius, but sometimes, you know, your own field kind of clutters yourself up, but anyway. Uh, Thessalos, uh, throws a fireball at the hand of your opponent, and, uh, yeah, if you happen to hit a monster, 
they'll take damage too, so that's good. Uh, Raiza, now Raiza is probably one of my favorite ones, um, because it can basically deck seal, and by that I mean it targets a card on the field and places it right back on top of the deck. So you know, yeah, if you keep using Raiza's effect, which you theoretically could do with this deck, you basically seal their draw. You, you know what I mean? See, it, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like an old school Yada lock, if Yada Garasu lock, if any of you guys know what I'm talking about. So it's really good. Um, the next cards are actually what's called a uh, vassal, or uh, actually in the Japanese version they're called vessel cards. Why'd they change the vassal? Eh, I don't know, but... Anyway, um... Long story short... Yeah, all of these... I think all of these can be special summoned. In some various way. Um, but long story short, these guys are here to basically speed to the field really quickly. And then, um... And then, you know, be used for tribute summon. So there you go. Um, next card. Let's see. Oops. Whoa. <laughs> and I almost lost my, uh, using a little lamp light here, guys. Sorry about that. Man, yeah, I almost, uh, <laughs> almost sent my lamp to the shadow realm. And thus my ankles and my feet. Sorry about that. Well, that was a good catch, Josh. But I'm paying attention. Um... Wow, this is actually a pretty good card. Uh, Illusory Snatcher. Uh, what this does is it'll basically clone whenever you tribute summon. Uh, and you may say, what's the point? Uh, long story short, overlay. Overlay. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, also, oh, ni a nice one. I'm glad they started putting this in another structure deck. Tragodeo. Really good card. Um, eh, this is really good for overlay, too. But also... You know, if you have a loaded hand, uh, loaded, a.k.a. five or more, yeah, this card can be pretty powerful, not gonna lie. So, and it's easy to special summon, so there you go. Uh, also, there's Dandelion here. <laughs> Classic, man. Uh, yeah, this has Yu-Gi-Oh! GX all over it. I'm pretty sure Jaden, or uh, Yuki Judai, he used this card a lot, man, so. Classic. I've never owned this card either, so. Pretty exciting for me here. Uh, but basically, when this card's sent to the graveyard, uh, even like sent from your hand, you get two fluff tokens. So, there you go. Uh, Mathematician. Eh, it's basically there to draw cards. And then you have eh, Classic Battle Fader and Rainbow Karibo. So, there you go. And, uh, what's up? And then, uh, from there, uh, from there, like the main support cards are the ones you're going to want to get. And those are, you know, Tenacity, Domain, uh, March, Return, Stormforth of the Monarchs, and then Strike of the Monarchs. Now, these are the spells that can be searched for. And, I'm like, like I said, I'm not going to go over them all, but long story short, they help you either cycle the current Monarchs you have on the field, or just, like, constantly abuse drawing and and other destruction. <laughs> so, uh, but long story short, those counter some of the current meta. So there you go. Uh, also, there's Soul Exchange. So there you go. Comes with the uh, enemy controller and dice spoon. Both pretty good. Um, so yeah. And also Soul Charge, which is actually really good if you, you you just need a tribute. Oh yeah. Also, some of those spells will special summon a monster, so you can get a tribute that way. So. Now, the uh, new trap uh, monarch cards are Prime Monarch, First Monarch, Escalation, Monarchs Awaken, and the Monarchs Erupt. Now, that's a nasty trap, by the way. But all of these um, basically help, like, for example, First Monarch. I'll read this one. Uh, special summon this card is an effect monster. Fiend type, 6 star. Um, if summon this way, you can discard a card, declare one attribute. This card becomes that attribute. can be treated as two tribute summons for the tribute summon of a monster with the same attribute. So basically this, if you declare dark, you can get out, uh, what you call it, you can get the guy out, you know, on the front cover really, really, really easily. 
Um, and his name was, I already forgot, <laughs> but you can get out Oedipus, yeah. If you simply declare dark, you can get him out really easily, you know, with just those two cards. So, yeah, pretty good combos going on. But, uh, yeah, that's basically the just the deck. It's like, it's it counters the current meta, and then you just kind of, you keep chaining and summoning. So, but, uh, yeah. Uh, the only other traps are Pinpoint Guard, which is good, and Order of the Emperor, so. But, uh, yeah, that pretty much completes the, uh, Emperor of Darkness deck, and I will thank you all for joining me. I'll see you all next time. Bye.